Okay, so yesterday we were looking at finding a vertical asymptote. We say we can find that vertical asymptote a couple of different ways. One way was to look at the table. And what exactly were we looking for in that table? Alexander, what do we look for in the table to find the vertical asymptote? First four at the top of our worksheet yesterday. What was it that you were looking for? The air. If you can find the air in the table, then you can also find the vertical asymptote. Then we also said, what if we don't have a table to look at? Well, you can take the denominator and do something with it. Here, what did we do with the denominator yesterday to find the vertical asymptote? Equal it to zero and then solve. That's what we did yesterday. Take it, set it equal to zero, and solve. By the way, what exactly is an asymptote? What do we say it was? Where it gets really close to the line, and it doesn't touch. It's a line that our graph approaches that doesn't touch. Okay, so yesterday we were looking at how do you find the vertical asymptote? How do you find that vertical line that we come close to but don't touch? Today we're going to look at how do you find the horizontal asymptote. So today's going to be just a little bit trickier in finding this horizontal asymptote. So let's go ahead and get started here. In order to find that horizontal asymptote, the first thing you're going to need to look for is the exponent in your rational function. You're going to have to look for exponents. More specifically, you're going to be finding the greatest exponent that's used in the numerator and in the denominator. We're going to be looking specifically at the exponents. We're going to be looking for the largest exponent in the numerator and the largest exponent in the denominator. We've got a name for that large exponent. We call it the degree. Okay. So we're going to be looking for the degree of our numerator. We're going to be looking for the degree of the denominator as well. And depending on what kind of numbers we have, we'll determine what kind of horizontal asymptote we have. So there's going to be three different things that can occur when we look at the degree of the numerator and the denominator. So here it is. Three things. The first one, number one, it says the degree of the numerator is greater. Anytime we have a larger exponent in the numerator, it says here that a horizontal asymptote, there will be no horizontal asymptote. If the degree in the numerator is greater, we have no horizontal asymptote. So we have a bigger exponent on the top than we do on the bottom, there is no horizontal asymptote. That's the first thing. Second thing, if the degree of the numerator and the denominator are exactly the same, if we have the same degree on top and on the bottom, it says in order to find your asymptote, we're going to take the leading coefficient of our numerator and divide it by the leading coefficient of the denominator. Circle that part for me. We'll be using that here in a minute. The third possibility is this one over here. Here it says the degree of the denominator is greater. So if we have a larger exponent in the denominator, it says that our horizontal asymptotes are going to be x equal to 0. So again, one of three things is going to happen. We're either going to have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0 right here. It's possible that we have no horizontal asymptote. Or, if the degree is the same in top and on the bottom, we're going to have to take the leading coefficient of the numerator and divide it by the leading coefficient of the denominator to find that horizontal asymptote. All right, so let's see how this works. We're going to work, go through some examples now. So if we look at the first one here, the first thing we're going to look at is the degree of the numerator and the denominator. Now, the Greek just refers to the largest exponent. So, let's concentrate right now just on the numerator. Look at the top part. What's the largest exponent you see in the numerator? Exponent. We're looking for the exponent. 2. That's the exponent. That's the largest exponent. Matter of fact, it's the only exponent. Now, look at your denominator. What's the largest exponent in your denominator? Right there, it's a 2. So the degree of our numerator is 2. The degree of the denominator is also 2. So notice how these degrees are exactly the 
same. So when we compare these two, they end up being the same exact thing. So remember, I told you one of three things is going to happen. Look at the notes right above this example. When they're exactly the same, what does it say happens when they're exactly the same? What do we need to do? Divide the leading coefficient. So we're going to have to divide the leading coefficient of the numerator and divide the leading coefficient of the denominator. So the question is, what's the leading coefficient in the numerator? What's the number in front of the x squared, guys? Three. Three. That's the leading coefficient. What's the leading coefficient of the denominator? It's a five. So we're going to divide those two numbers. So our horizontal asymptote is y equals three divided by five. Three divided by five. Now, of course, if I divide three by five, we're going to end up with a decimal. And I prefer the fraction instead because it's more accurate than the decimal. So we're going to leave it at the fraction three fifths. So this is where our horizontal asymptote would occur at three fifths. Let's try that again. Look at the second example. I want to know what's the degree of the numerator. I want to know what's the largest exponent. The largest exponent is a what? Two. Look at the denominator. What's the largest exponent of the denominator? And yes, there is an exponent here. You just can't see it. But know what it is? The one. So our degree for the denominator is a one. So notice this one. A little different here. This time, the degree of the numerator is greater. In other words, we have a bigger exponent on top than we do on uh, than we do on the bottom. So look at the notes we just had. There were three possibilities. What do we write down, or what does it say when we have the bigger exponent on top? When the bigger exponent on top, then we have no horizontal axis. So if the degree of the numerator is larger. And the degree of the denominator, we have no horizontal axis. Okay, let's try another one here. The next one, negative seven, uh, negative x plus seven over x squared plus eight x minus one. I want to know what's the degree of the numerator. What's the largest exponent? Again, there is an exponent. You just can't see it. It's a one. So the degree here is 1. What's the degree of your denominator? 2. So notice this time, the degree of the denominator is large. In other words, the bigger exponent is down at the bottom. So look at your notes. There are three possibilities here. What does it say in our notes when we have the uh, bigger exponent at the bottom in the denominator? What is the horizontal axis? It's right in front of you. You've got to look at it y equals zero. That is our horizontal axis. So anytime we've got a larger exponent on the bottom than we do on the top, our horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals zero. All right, we got one more here. The numerator. Samantha, what's the degree of the numerator? What's the largest exponent? Three. Now let's look at the denominator. The denominator. Alexander, what's the degree of the denominator? What's the biggest exponent you see down at the bottom? Three. So notice we have three over three, which means that the exponents or the degree of the numerator and denominator are exactly the same. So if you look at the notes there, Matt, what does it say on our notes whenever the degrees are the same? What is our horizontal axis? What does it say about horizontal axis? So what? Right? Yep. The leading, there you go. The leading coefficients, we're going to divide this. All right? So we're going to take the leading coefficient of the numerator and divide it by the leading coefficient of the denominator. So what they're asking us to do is do 4 divided by 2. Anybody know what 4 divided by 2 is? 2. So we end up with a horizontal asymptote of y equals 2a, 2. y equals 2. Now remember guys, we're finding the horizontal asymptote. And when we're writing the equation for a horizontal asymptote, it's always y equals some number. Just like yesterday, we were finding vertical asymptote. It was always x equals some number. 
All right, now what I want you to do is go ahead and get out your uh, paper that says the basketball asymptotes. There are two sides to it. Thank you. You're looking at side two. There are eight problems, and these are the eight problems that you see there. We're going to go ahead and find the horizontal asymptotes on these eight. And all we're going to do is look at the degree of the numerator, look at the degree of the denominator, and determine what the horizontal asymptote is. So here we go. First one, number one, degree of the numerator. What's the degree of the numerator? I'll tell you what, we'll do it this way. We're just going to start here, we're going to go down the road, then we'll come back up, down, and up. So be ready. All right. Degree of the numerator, what is it? One. One. I'm going to put a one. All right, Matthew, what's the degree of the denominator? One. So notice how they're exactly the same. So now look at the notes that you just got. One, two, or three. Notice how they're exactly the same. When they're the same, what do we end up, what do we need to do? All right, next. Remember, we're going down the line, we're coming back up. What does it say in the notes? They're exactly the same. We're looking right in the middle. There were three of them, right in the middle. And I had y'all circle them. Phi equals Okay, the leading coefficient. We're going to divide the leading coefficients. Now, there are leading coefficients, guys. There's number in front of the x. Anybody know what the numbers are in front of the x's? One. Anybody know what one divided by one is? One. So our horizontal asymptote is y equals 2a, one. All we did was divide the leading coefficients. All right, let's start back there. Felix, help me out. Degree of the numerator. One. All right. Degree of the denominator. One. One. Notice, once again, they're exactly the same. So what do I need to do to find the horizontal asymptote? Divide the leading coefficients. All right, so the leading coefficients here are 1 and 2. Anybody know what you get when you divide 1 by 2? 1 over 2, 1 half. So our horizontal asymptote is y equals 1 half. By the way, do we need the y equal part? Yes. Yes, we do. Make sure you include. All right, let's come over here. Uh, next one, now, Alexander, help me out here. We need the leading coefficient, or not the leading coefficient, but the uh, degree of the numerator. What's the degree of the numerator? 1. Next, the degree of the denominator is 1. Okay, Samantha, we got 1 over 1, which means they're exactly the same. So what does it say in our notes when they're exactly the same? There we go. We're going to divide the leading coefficients. In this case, those leading coefficients are 5 and negative 3. So what is 5 divided by negative 3? 5 divided by negative 3 negative 5 thirds. Now you could give me the decimal, but again, I prefer the fraction. It's more accurate than the decimal. Uh, number four. Number four, where are we at? Okay, two. two. Garrett, what's the uh, degree down at the bottom? One. So notice this time we got a bigger exponent on top than we do on the bottom. So look at your notes. What does it say? when we have a bigger exponent on top than we do on the bottom. No horizontal asymptote. All right, so no asymptote. No asymptote. Anytime that exponent is bigger on top than it is on the bottom, there is no horizontal asymptote. Okay, number five. Number five, notice how the leading coefficient here is a, or not leading coefficient, but the degree of the numerator is a one. Notice how the degree of the denominator is a 2. And notice where the larger exponent is. This time the larger exponent is down at the bottom. So what does it say in our notes when we have a larger exponent down at the bottom? y equals 0. So our horizontal asymptote for number 5 is y equals 0. Okay, let's keep going. Number 6, the degree of our numerator is going to be a 2, the largest exponent. The degree of the denominator is 2. Again, it's the largest exponent. And since we have 2 over 2, the degrees are exactly the same. So what does our note say when the degrees are exactly the same? 
divide the leading coefficient. So we're going to do 5 divided by 2. So what is 5 divided by 2? 5 over 2. 5 halves. Number 7, a little bit tricky on this. 5 is the numerator. What's the degree for the numerator? Five. Zero. There is no exponent. As a matter of fact, there's no variable. So the degree here is zero. Let's go to the denominator. What's the degree down there in the denominator? One. So again, notice how we have the larger exponent at the bottom. And anytime we have the larger exponent at the bottom, what are we going to write for our horizontal asymptote? Y equals zero. Number eight. X to the third. Well, the largest exponent there is a three. That's the degree of the numerator. 2x squared plus 7, 2 is the largest exponent, therefore our degree is 2. So notice we've got a larger exponent on top than we do on the bottom, therefore we have what for our horizontal asymptote? There you go, no horizontal asymptote. No horizontal asymptote. So again, anytime the larger exponent is on top, we have no asymptote. Anytime the larger exponent is at the bottom, it's going to be y equals 0. Anytime the degrees are exactly the same, we're going to have to divide our leading coefficients. Any questions on this one? We're good. I can give you a test right now. We don't need to correct. Yes? All right. Let's do it. Okay, okay. 